Anderson Lake County Park is home to the largest human-made reservoir in Santa Clara County and is seven miles long and 1,250 acres of surface area. The park is more than 4,200 acres of mostly flat land with wide paved trails and some narrower dirt trails that are used by pedestrians, cyclists, and equestrians. We begin our journey at the trailhead near Anderson Lake Visitor Center. The trail is narrow and within 100 feet it leads us to Coyote Creek. This is the longest creek in Santa Clara County, flowing north for more than 60 miles through Coyote and Anderson Reservoirs, San Jose, Milpitas, and finally into San Francisco Bay. All of the trails in this county park are never far from Coyote Creek. The creek provides habitat for waterfowl such as great blue heron, wood and mallard ducks, and belted kingfishers. Belted kingfishers are stocky, large-headed birds with a shaggy head of feathers and a thick dagger-like bill. Females are blue-gray with a rust-colored band on their belly and flanks. Their legs are short and their tails are medium length and square tipped. They spend a lot of time perched along the edges of creeks and lakes searching for small fish. The creek also provides a habitat that supports many types of trees, such as western sycamore, valley oak, red willow, and coast live oak. Coast live oak is an evergreen tree that grows up to 100 feet tall with many large crooked branches. They can reach 250 years old with trunk diameters of up to 12 feet. Their acorns are an important food source for birds and animals. Coast live oak leaves are dark green, thick, and leathery. Their edges have spiny teeth. The leaves have two layers of photosynthetic cells to maximize sun absorption. The trees we pass along the creek make comfortable nesting spots for a variety of birds. We find an oak titmouse looking for food on the coast live oak. They are small, gray-brown songbird with a short stubby bill, a short crest on its head, and a medium long tail. Next we hear the song of a white-breasted nuthatch and see it quickly creeping around and upside down on a large branch of a coast live oak tree. This small bird has a relatively large head. As their name suggests, they have a frosty white breast, neck and face, with a gray-blue back and black cap. The underside of their tail is rust-colored. They have a habit of jamming large nuts and acorns into tree bark, then whacking them with their sharp bill to release the seed. We walk further along the narrow dirt trail to find more spots to view the creek. There are tall grasses on either side of the path and bushes and trees further from the trail. We can hear the sound of songbirds.
We walk over a reddish-brown wood bridge that crosses Coyote Creek. A golden-crowned sparrow jumps along the bridge's handrail. These large sparrows have a small gray bill and face, black cap, and breeding adult males have a bright yellow crown. After the bridge, we turn left onto a path that leads to a walnut tree orchard. Walnuts are fast-growing trees that develop broad canopies and demand a lot of sunshine. The trees can self-fertilize because they have both male and female flower parts on the same tree. Walnuts produce a growth inhibitor called juglone that inhibits the growth of some plant species that grow close to the tree. Some of the pests that the tree has to protect itself against include the codling moth, navel orange worm, walnut husk fly, aphids, scales, mites, and nematodes. To the right of the bridge is a damaged chicken housing structure from the 1920s that could fit tens of thousands of chickens. In the early 1900s, chickens were primarily raised on family farms where a flock of 400 birds was considered large. Families with larger flocks sold eggs as their primary source of income, and chicken meat was a delicacy that was reserved for special occasions. The broiler industry began in the 1920s. This was when thousands of chickens were confined to housing like this old one along the Coyote Creek Trail, and they were eaten more often as meat. Behind the chicken house is the oldest Santa Clara County winery, Malaguerra Winery. The two-story structure was built for Jose Malaguerra in 1869. It was made of basalt rubble stone taken from the nearby Coyote Creek. At this time, Malaguerra was one of 26 vintners in Santa Clara County. Except for a break during a period of grape overproduction during the turn of the century, Malaguerra Winery remained in operation until 1950. We head back to the bridge to roam around the meadow, where there are rows of orchard trees and coast live oak. There are all kinds of birds singing and jumping around in the trees. There are rows and rows of blooming trees that have pale pink and white flowers whose petals are notched. We can also see many fuzzy shells hanging from the branches. They are almond trees and their shells won't split open until July. During the fall harvest, mechanical tree shakers are used to vigorously shake the tree and the almonds fall to the ground. There is a chorus of sounds coming from the trees. We spot a mourning dove sitting on one of the branches. It has tan wings with black spots and a slender tan tail and small bill. Its head looks small compared to its body. At the very top of a coast live oak tree are two white-crowned sparrows. Its yellow bill contrasts with the bold black and white stripes on its head. The two birds seem to be surveying the meadow while they relax on the tips of branches. On a thin branch of another tree, there is a female Anna's hummingbird. She has an emerald colored cap and wings and the rest of her body is gray. These are among the most common hummingbirds along the Pacific coast. Male hummingbirds have more iridescent green feathers on their body and sparkling pink throats. We are lucky to catch a glimpse of a spotted towhee. It has striking bright orange rust colored flanks and eyes that contrast sharply with its black head, tail and wings that have white on their tips. During the mating season, males have been recorded spending up to 90% of their mornings singing to attract a mate. It's amazing how many birds are in the trees. 
Hidden in the branches of another tree is a small bird walking up and around a medium-sized branch, climbing to the top of the tree. It has a bright red cap, a chisel-shaped bill, and its face, wings, and body have black and white stripes. This area is the perfect habitat for this nuttall woodpecker because they live in oak woodlands and like to be near creeks with cottonwoods, willows, and sycamores, all trees found here at the park. Just like most other woodpeckers, they have four toes arranged in an X pattern with two set forward and the other two backward, which allows them to cling to vertical surfaces more easily. The grassy meadow is a place to find other types of birds that look for nuts and seeds on the ground. We spot a California scrub jay hopping along the ground with an almond shell in its mouth. While these birds and their calls are common in California, they have beautiful deep azure blue wings, tail and cap, with a light gray stripe on its back and soft white underside and white brow. These birds have a reputation for being mischievous. As an example, they are known for stealing acorns from acorn woodpecker caches. Another bird we find foraging on the ground for seeds is the California towhee that is a light gray bird all over. Unlike humans who want to stay away from poison oak, these birds frequently build their nests in poison oak and eat their berries. In addition to trees and birds, there are many types of mammals that make their home by Coyote Creek. We can find traces of these animals from their tracks. These animals include gray foxes that are small, weigh up to 15 pounds, are omnivores, and have the unique ability to climb trees, so they've been nicknamed tree fox. They are nocturnal, so it's unlikely to see them at the park. There are bobcats, mule deer, and wild boar, another nocturnal omnivore that was introduced from Europe in the 1500s. There are opossums, cottontail rabbits, and black-tailed jackrabbits that are easily identified by their long black-tipped ears and gray-brown body and long, strong hind legs that can get them to speeds up to 40 miles per hour and jumping up to 19 feet high to escape predators such as coyotes, red-tailed hawks, great horned owls, and bobcats. Last but not least, there are fragrant plants that grow along Coyote Creek. For example, pearly everlasting. If you rub some of its flowers between your fingers, it will emit the odor of maple syrup and leave a sticky substance on your fingers. Alkali heliotrope is a perennial herb whose stem uncoils as it blooms tiny white flowers, some with yellow and some with purple throats. It has aromas of cherries, almonds, and vanilla. Another plant found in this habitat is white whorehound, a bushy plant with unique woolly and crinkled leaves and white flowers. If you crush the leaves in your hand, you will note a bitter smell. It is safe to taste it as it's been used as an herbal remedy for thousands of years.